this lesson we're going to look at Banks tracks. Now, before we get started on like what that is, how to work with them, literally, like what are they? What do they even mean? I just want you to remember with me, we're still under this idea of circular motion. Okay. Now, within our scheme of circular motion, you've got two kinds of velocity. Do you remember what the two kinds are? Two kinds of ways of describing how things are moving. Okay, so number one, you can talk about angular momentum. What was our name for angular momentum? W. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which looks a whole lot like W and? Linear velocity. Linear velocity or tangential velocity, which in this context mean the same thing. Okay. Now remember, on a circle, omega is about the change in theta over time. Right? It's the change in theta. So here's theta. Here. And linear velocity, by contrast, is about the change in this kind of arc length over here. Okay? So this is dl on dt if l is your arc length. Okay? Now, in the context of circular motion so far, we've pretty much been, like, omega is where it's at. Like, everything, almost everything has been in terms of omega, in terms of angular velocity. Okay? So, for instance, what we've been talking about forces... And the force that makes the circular motion happen, we've pretty much always been talking about it in terms of omega. If we say the force along the normal is positive outwards, away from the center, then what's our normal expression out, F equals ma, for uniform circular motion? What is it? It's... Give it, to, it starts with a negative because it's toward the center. M R omega squared. Yeah, very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a double. Okay, so very good. However, um, on some occasions, including the one we're about to look at now, angular momentum is actually something you know nothing about. Instead, it's linear momentum, linear velocity that you know about. Okay, so what I'm going to think about is if this is the connection between these two, right? I've got L equals according to radian measure in that circle, L is equal to um, R theta. Right? R theta. Like so. So therefore, instead of saying that the force is minus R, MR <coughs> omega squared, right? Think about it this way. If L equals R theta, then V is equal to R omega. We've seen this before, right? So I'm going to make a substitution in here for omega. Omega is V on R, right? V on R. So I can write this in just the same way as minus MR V on R squared. You've seen this before, right? So I can just simply uh, simplify that a little bit. And here's a slightly different expression. These are both equivalent. It's just that this is going to be much more useful to us if what we know is linear velocity rather than angular velocity. Make sense? Is that okay? Yeah. This unit needs to be proven on now. No, it's of the same. It's of the same um, standing as this. However, I am going to say, like, I always, I always write this first, and then I come to this. It's not a very big leap, and this way I know what I'm talking about. Okay. Right. So just have that kind of sort of filed away in the back of your mind, and now let's think about a car negotiating a turn on the road. Okay. A car negotiating a turn on the road. Now. The arc that this um, road is on, right, it kind of, for this, while it's traveling along this arc, the car is moving in circular motion, right? Which means that for circular motion, actually, no, I'm going to stay with this. For circular motion to be happening, there has to be a resultant force in what direction? Which direction will the force be going in? Think, think back to uniform circular motion. The force has to be going toward the center of the circle that this arc is on, right? Does that make sense? Like, I mean, this, this <laughs> presumably, this is not just a circular road, this is just a part of it, but it's like part of a circle, and while we're on it, there is some kind of center to which our forces are turning, right? Otherwise, you're not going to be changing direction as you go, okay? And the, the actual force is this force, right? I don't need to write, because I've got arrows here that indicate the direction of what's going on, just like how I write mg, and then there's an arrow, I'm not gonna write minus mv squared on r here, I'm just gonna write, and be squared on R, because that's the magnitude that I'm interested in. Okay? So this is the direction that the force is going in, in order to make the turn. Okay? Now we've been looking at all kinds of different things that make this, um, make this circular motion happen. The most frequent thing we've been looking at is the tension in a string. But that's not the only thing that can make um, circular motion happen. For example, uh, moon orbiting around the Earth, 
There's no string. What's the force that's sort of making this happen? It's gravity, right? Gravity. Now, we've got ten <laughs> tension in a string. It's getting to that time in the afternoon. We've got tension in a string. We've got gravity. What is the force that makes this happen? Friction. Okay, so you're in the car, right? And you're turning the wheel, and your wheels are in contact with the ground. Okay. Now, it's friction that's pushing in that way because you're turning that way. This is why if there's rain out, right, there are so many accidents because rain means less friction between your, your tires and the road. Okay? So without friction, if this is not actually happening, we don't have enough friction to produce this resultant force, then what's going to happen if suddenly this disappears? Think about the discus, right? What's going to happen? This guy's just going to go, Wee! he's going to skid off the road, okay? He's not going to have sufficient friction to maintain that resultant force toward the, the center of the circle, okay? Now, this is also why if you're on a turn, if you've seen, if you've been out, turns, they have speed limits. Did you know? Did you know if you're, on, if you're, you're out? Yeah, that's right. Now, I'm going to show you one in a second, okay? Now, here's why. This equation, this equation tells us everything, right? Not all turns have speed limits, speed limits, right? Or speed suggestions. <laughs> it's just a guideline. Um, only some of them do, namely sharp turns, okay? Now, this is actually a pretty sharp turn, the one that I've drawn on here. Now, just look at this expression. This expression alone tells you what's going on. Why is it, what can I say out of this expression that tells me why a sharp turn requires me to limit my speed? Have a look, think about it. Say that again, right? a bit louder though. Mass is constant and radius is constant. Okay, so you've got the mass of your car, you'd expect, is constant, right? Velocity, you can change. The radius is not just constant. On a sharp turn, the point is that the radius is small, right? If the radius is small, because if the radius is large, it's like a very wide turn. If the radius is small, what is happening to this whole value here? It gets bigger. bigger. Yeah, denominator gets smaller. The whole thing gets bigger. So you require extra force to keep you in, right? Now, unless your tires are amazing, you're going to need to do this to compensate. So that's why you'll see, actually when I found it, it was stock from photography, so sorry. Um, that's why I went and found this. This is the kind of thing that you see, right? So there's the turn and they're like, look, this is going to be small, right? So therefore, you'd better make this small in sort of in comparison, especially because this is being squared. Of course, you do have one alternative, which is um, <laughs> if you... If you do want to decrease the mass of your car, if you could do that somehow, like throw a passenger out, then that would have the same effect, which is why, which is why, if you think about, like, say, a truck or a bus, that kind of thing, where do they, if you watch them make a turn, right? If there's two lanes to turn from, which lane do they choose? They choose the outer lane. They choose the outer lane. So here, they choose this lane over here, rather than this lane over here. Why? What are they doing? What are they doing? Increasing. Increasing. Yeah, very good. They're trying to make this bigger, right? Because they don't want to throw out some of their cargo. Okay, so. Is that what that sign means? Or does it mean like, watch out for people who might be on the road? No, no, I, I, I photoshopped this sign. <laughs> this is, oh. <laughs> this <is> just, <laughs> I, if I found an actual sign like that, that'd be really hilarious and, and worrying. Okay, so, part of the problem is, like this, the reason why we have to do this, is because so far we've said there's only a single force that contributes in this direction, namely friction. Okay. Uh, for example, if we were to look at this rather than like top down, if we were to look at this like front on, okay, which direction is the normal force, the reaction force? Which way is that going? And the answer is it's say it again. Did you say out of the page. That's <laughs> not <laughs> Okay. Oh <laughs> You've got, you've got the ground, which presumably is flat, right? And so you have the normal force coming directly off, which is vertical, okay? But what if it wasn't? 